Hi, how are you? Let's talk about scripture. The scripture readings have been taken from the prophet Jeremiah, from the letter to the Romans, and from the gospel of Matthew. I love the language of the prophet Jeremiah, especially when it says, it feels like a burning fire imprisoned in my bones. He's expressing his passion for God. The human being is amazing. Uh, we as human beings are capable of challenging ourselves to achieve what for others is impossible. And for that, we make efforts and sacrifices that for others, they're impossible to go through. In our, co in our culture, we accept and value sacrifice, but only in certain areas. Um, there is a common ground in this. And today's families agree and do sports <laughs> uh, because they feel that is the best for their kids. So they want all families want to involve their kids on sports. Uh, and for that, they are willing to make all kinds of sacrifices, expenses, trips, hours of practice, games, diets, among other things. Um, I was an athlete too, I was a swimmer. Uh, I was a competitive swimmer since I was really small. I didn't get to go to the Olympics, but hey, I was in state competitions. <laughs> Uh, state tournaments <laughs> but I saw some of my um, you know team members that were able to achieve those goals of going to international competitions like the Pan Americans or the Olympics so um, I was able to live in that environment and I realized the investment the personal investment that it takes to be involved in a sport right um, the objective of swimming is to be faster than others right so i remember going to practice and challenging myself to see how many strokes i can do without having to turn my my head to take a breath right to breathe again when i was rested i was able to do six <laughs> but then when i was tired i only could do two <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <sighs> again. <laughs> so we would think about strengthening ourselves. So we would strengthen our arms by restri restricting our legs. And we would strengthen our legs by restricting our arms. Uh, we would swim with weights uh, to gain strength. And uh, to gain agility, we would swim with uh, claps and paddles and... Uh, in competition season, we would swing four hours, two hours early in the morning before going to school, and then two hours in the afternoon after school. And the swimming pool that I was going to didn't have a heater. So during uh, cold weather, uh, even though I was in a warm weather area, <laughs> It was cold, <laughs> so I could, you know, see my my breathe <laughs> when I was speaking, um, and it was the water was cold, so breaking into that water was hard for all of us, especially just in a swimsuit, right? Um, you know, all this, all this sacrifice, just to be better at one thing, swimming. What motivates an athlete to persist, you know? What leads them to sacrifice, to make efforts, even though when they get hurt, when they fail, right? What seduces a person to this life, you know? We can understand this with the prophet Jeremiah, but Jeremiah had a different passion. His passion was God. Jeremiah says, but then it becomes and he's talking about his passion for God. It becomes like 
fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. God wants us to feel that fire, but for him, right? And that fire burning is the one described by the prophet Jeremiah, the fire that seduced him, that was stronger than him, that he was able to entail any sacrifice for it, stronger than any resistance that he would put up, that even when he wanted to give up, he can't, he couldn't, he can't. <laughs> because he couldn't contain for himself what God made him feel. Now his whole being was inhabited by that deep passion for God. Like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. When we recognize that fire, God will, we feel that fire. When we recognize that fire, we could proclaim, recognizing that that drives us to an unquenchable thirst for God. And we could say, my soul is thirsting for you. Oh Lord, my God, is that passion that makes us feel alive, really, really alive. Um, that passion, this fire. God also feels for us. Jesus show, showed us that passion. Jesus, for that passion, was willing to go to Jerusalem to suffer greatly, to be killed, and on the third day be raised. It is difficult for others to understand the fire burning that lead us, that drive us, motivate us to so many things in life. And it's especially difficult for others to understand our passion for God. And sometimes we also are stuck and we get that intervention that Peter tried with Jesus because sometimes it looks like a lot. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, and they would say, why do you spend so much time at church? You know, why don't you dedicate yourself to something else? You know, that would give you more money or more free time or an easy schedule, right? And many times these things uh, comes from the people that love you the most, comes from your family, from your closest friends, and they do it for love. They do it because they care for you. They do it because they see you when you struggle, when you fail, when you get frustrated with your path, right? But that also might take us away from the things that make us feel truly alive, our passion. Peter also had good intentions and he was speaking and he was acting out of love for Jesus, you know. He genuinely didn't want Jesus to suffer, right? But in doing so, he was acting as wanting to separate Jesus to his passion for us. And nothing would take Jesus away from us. When our loved ones try to intervene, <laughs> they want to separate us from, they want to, you know, spare us our sacrifices, our suffering, you know. But in doing so, they might want to separate us or take us away from that fire burning imprisoned in our bones, right? And the thing is that 
even if we wanted to, we couldn't because we are in the same position as the prophet Jeremiah is stronger than us. You were too strong for me and you triumphed. <laughs> Following that passion entails resignation. That fire burning will take us to sacrifices, to renouncing to certain things in life. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said in the gospel, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one who gained the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? Isn't that amazing that even in this difficult path that some of us cho chose, you know, and some of us have passion for many other things, right? we find that that difficult path brings us full life. We, feel, we really feel alive in those journeys, in those choices. We're passionate for so many things. Uh, some of us are very much into politics, into sports, into art, that our most important passion that the one that make us feel that fire burning imprisoned in our bones may be God that although we try to resist him although we try to separate ourselves from that thirst may that passion for God be stronger than us that we may not be able to contain that fire burning, imprisoned in our bones. May God manifest himself in our lives in such a way that we are left completely seduced. <laughs> that may be stronger than us so much that we get no other choice but to offer also ourselves completely to him may god bless you and let us be saints <laughs>